and a lot of these guys are flying they've been coming forever but if you've never been to dead cow high sierra flying we try to have a pilot meeting every morning about nine o'clock around this little fire right we got all this wood i don't know why we're huddling around there. <laughs> wednesday night man we made, made a little dent in our firewood last night i'm thinking wow i might have to get another truckload here all of a sudden coming with what we have tonight tomorrow but friday saturday nights are the big fire nights um I think we counted about 60 airplanes last night, about 100 and some people already for Wednesday night. Last year we were talking Wednesday night, I think we had about seven of us here. And uh, it's just, this thing just keeps evolving. But the big thing is uh, safety, you know, safety and everybody's, everybody's presence here is of the utmost importance. And you gotta sort of police one another. If you see people doing things that, that aren't right, you know, we live on that gut instinct, and if your gut tells you, man, that didn't look right, there's nothing wrong with, with saying something to your buddy and or vice versa, asking somebody, hey, how was that? We're really, really big. Nowhere in the world do you go in and it's right traffic for both runways, but we made it that way to keep it really simple for a number of reasons without going in depth, but right traffic, just depending upon what the wind direction is, it keeps you here in a, just a nice clockwise flow. You can go all the way around. We, we got somebody usually on the radio when it gets busy, letting people know that if we're going to switch directions, giving you a good advisory. But big cub or a big space, big area, big pattern. There's no sense flying this tight little pattern because we spread out. It's all about see and avoid. Who you are, where you are, that's it. We don't need to be carrying on all these big conversations, and it's going to get really, really busy. And so. You know, we've got our, our published, we try not to fly over camp for obvious reasons. It's a big pattern. We always use the runway. We always, all of us have these aircraft, we can punch power and get out of here in about 50 feet. But because of the mass and because of where it is and, and past history with various fly-ins, it's incredibly important that we always use the runway. It's also really important, we're probably gonna have 50 to 100 kids running around on bikes here come Saturday. And it would be really, really great if you can help your neighbor push out at least to the porta potties and then taxi out. Watch where you're doing your run ups and dusting people. We've been doing run ups down here, dusting Toby's camp. You got a whole lake bed to get out and go do your run up and warm up. But I just can't stress you gotta use the runway. Land and take off on the runway. When you land, you can obviously make a quick turn left or right to get over here. But use that runway, right traffic all the time. You guys all know the frequencies. Once you get, people always ask me, what's this 360180 line that we published? Well, 360 is north, 180 is south. If you're a five mile radius to the lake bed, we're all here on 122725. But when you get beyond five miles east, then you can change over to the four fingers or whatever frequency you want, which would be the 12340. And if you're west of that 360180 line, five miles, then you can go five fingers, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever frequency you want. But we're just trying to keep it real simple here at the lake bed to just make it as easy and as simple as possible because there's a lot of people that come here for the high sierra flying as their first off airport experience. And um, like I say all the time, man, I'm chewing my fingernails all the time on just safety is incredibly important. We had a situation our third year, I, I hate talking about it, but I always do. Everybody knows about it. To this day, I still talk about a mid-air collision that we had. It could have been avoided had we used the runway. Instead, we've got 150 people eating breakfast, one guy departing, two guys doing a run-up, and this young kid with this aircraft decides to make no radio calls, push power from the run-up area, and go straight across the runway and up into his buddy on the downwind traffic. Next thing you know, I had paper mache falling to the ground. Long story short, that's exactly what happened. There were two airplanes in the sky and they both ran into each other because they had poor communication, they had poor pattern work, and they were just doing stupid things. And so things and bad things happen when pilots do things that aren't expected. And so do the expected. It's a big, bright traffic pattern. It's really simple. You don't have to land on the line. The friggin' runway is 4,000 feet long. So those of you that are nose wheel or maybe smaller tires, maybe think about offsetting my track, maybe landing a little bit long. You know, depth perception at this lake bed, depending upon the sun, a lot of times you get that glassy water effect. There's nothing wrong with carrying a little power down the runway. Oh my goodness, it's nighttime. Hey, my wheels are on the ground, you know? And so you can fly down this runway. You don't need to do stole landings. 
I can promise you, you're going to see people ground loop and you'll see people go on their nose. I think we had 11 or 12 last year that went up on its nose or ground loop. And I mean, it's like one after another and you're thinking, man, holy cow, but it's a pressure packed situation when all of a sudden you got 400 people watching you land a new place, you're not used to altitude, the lake bed, there's a lot of variables. Now you're loaded, you've been flying for two hours to get here. And so, you know, these guys that are coming in when you're flying, it's take your time, you know, it's, it's just an airport. It's a big, beautiful spot. It's really, really long. Hell, the whole lake bed itself is three and a half miles long. So you got a place to get there. So anyway, that's kind of that. You can't stress enough, use the pattern right traffic all the time. Um, for those of you guys that are going to Bodad this afternoon, um, it's bush wheel equipped only. People are asking, well, can I get my 182 in there with this or that? It's a bush, it's a bush airstrip. And so if you have a capable bush aircraft, you can go to Bodad. Same thing for breakfast tomorrow. He's got a pancake breakfast. He's asked that nobody show up until about 9, 30, 10 o'clock because it's so darn cold up there and the sun coming up over the mountains. Um, and so that's tomorrow. Um, so today's Bodad, there's a, there's a, like a, breakfast and all that this after or excuse me a lunch early barbecue this afternoon up there if you're going you guys all know about that about what time uh i think he's starting to serve food about two o'clock one two o'clock and so you can go up there and hang out but again i stress it's bush equipped if you don't know it ask somebody that's been there there's a lot of folks that have been there before um, when you go to bodad bodad is left traffic counterclockwise so it's opposite of the lake bed and it'll make sense why because of the ridge and the mountains there and whatnot and it's pretty much a one way in from the south landing to the north it's heavily treed there's no go around uh, but it's 1200 feet long for those of you that are going in there there's a culvert at the south end you come over the top of the culvert land beyond the culvert on the grass the grass has like six to eight inch undulations in it not a big deal, but again, you need you need a bush equipped aircraft for it. It's, it's, the grass is a little moist as well. Um, other than that, um, today's a big mass arrival day. Um, we're going to have this lookers left TP set up over here at the TAC Aero. It's my big project to just go set up our clothing. And those of you that did the event bright and all that, I got a wristbands for you guys. You know, this whole idea is that I never... This isn't about to make money for me. It's a it's an opportunity to give back to aviation and promote this really cool thing that we have access to. But it's also incredibly expensive. And so I thank all of you that have donated because without it, it's it's just again I thank you for that. But in order to make it work, I've got planned for about 400 for dinner and gave everybody an opportunity last month to sign up for dinner. I want to feed everybody. But if all of a sudden we got more than 400 people. It's going to be interesting to see where it gets. And so those of you that did the event bright, come by and I'll give you a wristband. I just want to make sure for those of you that donated, you get a wristband, you get food and all that stuff. And those of you that can't afford a wristband or can't afford all that stuff, that's awesome. You're welcome to. I want to feed you, but I want to make sure I have enough. And so again, it's, I don't do, I, I wanted to never get to the point where I'm like, oh, I got to give wristbands and feed some and I can't feed others, but it's growing. It is what it is. And and again, I thank you for your donation and all that stuff. But again, just to make it so that those that have really pitched in, I want to make sure you get a wristband. And if you've ordered hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, pre-advance, I have all that as well. We got a list. Um, there's a lady, good looking gal, Madison will be here this morning. That's coming out and it's going to help us sell all that stuff. My wife and family will be here tonight. Um, and Jessica will be able to help with that as well. But um, again, we got some great sponsors from TAC Aero, Alaska Airframes. Um, and then uh, Cub Crafters, those guys really helped us out big time. I can't thank you guys enough. And of course, the, the TAC Aero Boys here, you can see their camp, and they've got 10, 15 airplanes here and a big crew, and they're all here to help you guys too. If you got any questions or wonderments, you know, they're, they're a great bunch. But as far as flying here and whatnot, um, people ask, where can I go? What is there to do? Has anybody seen the 747 yet? The 747 is directly over the the uh, ridge that you see there, you'll drop into a valley, which is the Smoke Creek. Then the highest ridge in the distance, you got to go over that, and that drops into Black Rock. And so out there, about 12 miles beyond Gerlock, up on the Soldier Meadow airstrip area, right up on the left side, north into Black Rock, is the 747. It's pretty neat to go sit out there and look at it, get a picture of it. I think there's a fence around it now that keeps you within about 100 yards of it. Um, 
but it's pretty neat out there. I, I got mixed emotions, you know, this whole leave no trace thing. And you get out there 20 miles out, you see this massive 747. And, gee, many Christmas. These hippies talk about how responsible and leave no trace they have to be. And anyway, it's cool to go check it out. Um, this ridge line right here, everything this side is BLM. And if you look up here, if you have a capable aircraft, there's, if it looks like it can be landed, it's been landed. We land all over, all these mountains, these ridges. This big thing right up here above my 180 in the yellow is called Outlook. We were up there this morning up there, and it's a beautiful spot. But if you got a bush-equipped aircraft, there's so many fun places. And then if you got the smaller tires and whatnot, all these dry lake beds that are around here are phenomenal. We have an old adage that dark is danger. If you see dark dirt, probably muddy, go find someplace else because there can be muddy, muddy deserts out here that just unsuspecting. The Smoke Creek Desert, which is the big desert just through this saddle out here, I call it the most dangerous desert in Nevada. And I've, we've pulled more airplanes and flipped more airplanes in that desert because you get snookered by this white dust thinking, oh, that's nice and dry, and it's actually a crust. And that crust can be anywhere between two inches and six inches, and you just don't know where it is. And so I tell people to stay out of that Smoke Creek Desert. Um, the only place that's good in the Smoke Creek Desert, if you're looking for that black pea gravel, maybe you see some grass or whatnot growing, you can usually count on that. But the old three pass rule, make sure you come in, drag it, touch it, feel it. For those of you that are into doing this off airport stuff, you know the rules, but be careful with Smoke Creek. Other than that, the majority of the land out here is all BLM. This ridge line is sort of the defining line between BLM, the other side's native beautiful pyramid lake. Everybody wants to go to the hot springs over there and get a photo with the geyser and your airplane and all that, but boy, you better be careful because the Indians over there will take your airplane and it's a lot more than showing up with a, you know, a shake in hand and a, and a bottle of whiskey. They'll take your airplane and you're going to owe a lot of money, so don't land on Indian property out there. It's a big deal. And you can define that. There's a, over the top out here, you can see a little power, power antenna sticking up on that. We land up there, that's called Power Saddle. But about 500 yards to the east of that, there's a barbed wire fence that runs clear to the Smoke Creek, runs all the way on that ridge, and it's plain as day uh, that that's native property. You don't land over there. The other thing that I'm thinking about uh, when you're landing on some of these dry lake beds, another big thing other than the dark dirt that I'm concerned out here is uh, barbed wire fences. There are barbed wire fences in Nevada everywhere, and you never know where they're going to be. And so when you come in and fly some of these drainages and or lake beds, the three pass rule, you got to have it apply on all aspects, man. You do your flyby and look at it. Okay, where am I touching down? Where am I going? Second one, you can usually come in and land and or you're still identifying stuff. But not only are you looking for whether or not you can get in or out or if it's smooth, because it might be. Uh, it's that old adage, if it looks smooth, it is. If it looks rough, it really is. Um, but make sure there's no fences, because there's barbed wire fences all over out here. And so that can get people in a real predicament big time fast. Um, if you go through the saddle here, that's about 15 minute flight to Stead. That's kind of your nearest fuel as of Susanville, which has given us a fuel discount. Susanville's about 20, Stead's about, I'll call it 15, 20. Then you also got Nervino up over the hills in the Sierra Valley. Call it 20 minutes. Those are your three local fuel stops. Um, where else could I fly? A really cool spot if you haven't done it is to go up, fly the Sierra Valley. Go around Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe, if you've never seen Lake Tahoe on a day like today, it's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, you fly around that shoreline. There's good eats at South Lake Tahoe. There's good eats at Truckee. There's also fuel in both places. And so if you want to go get a sandwich or something, those places are good to eat. Um, the best breakfast in the whole area is down at Minden. If you fly from here to Minden, they've got a great breakfast at the Tail Dragger Cafe. It'll probably take you about 30 minutes to get down there. And then uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there in that desert as well. It's just, it's BLM from here as far as you can go. And so I encourage you to take advantage of going and, and doing such, and seeing some sights. I stress if you haven't seen Lake Tahoe, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then the Sierra Valley as well, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, I think there's some of us that are going on various flyouts. Those of you that want to do some off airport stuff, get with somebody that's been here before and, and you can get sort of the lay of the land. Um, if you headed up toward Honey Lake and Susanville for fuel, be real.
real careful of Honey Lake because that was that's been full of water. It hasn't been draining this summer, and that water is just starting to draw up. And up there at Honey Lake, if you're thinking about landing on those beaches up there, that darkest danger rule is strong. And so there's good dirt up there, but there's also bad dirt. So just make sure you know where you're landing. Another really fun spot for bush guys is this this uh, oh that I call it the Herlong River. It's a dry river with with powdery white sand and uh, it's just awesome that you can fly in and out of that drainage and there's all kinds of really fun you know backcountry equipped places to land in that in that uh, river bottom but again there's barbed wire fences that show up here and there all the time um, anybody has any medical issues or things like that please make sure they come see us we've got medical equipment in our campers we've got AEDs we've got life support O2, all that stuff, and then on Friday, Saturday, we have the professional rescuers. Uh, they're coming out with an ambulance, and they'll have uh, four-wheelers and backboards and all that stuff for a race day, Friday, Saturday. Um, and so they'll be running around, and they're here to help as well if you need anything. You know, you got a headache, rough night, they'll probably give you an aspirin or whatnot. Um, the RC guys will be here tomorrow. They always set up somewhere right around here, and they always have coffee in the morning. They're a bunch of great folks. Um, the fire here, just so you guys know, it's it's we're getting big. Merrick, we might need some more wood, buddy. <laughs> Wednesday night we did a little dent. Um, tonight, let's not have such a huge dent because Friday, Saturday, we'll burn the snot out of that. But we still have our nice big fire out here. But I'm getting all, I look over this morning, I'm like, Wednesday night put a little dent on our fire. <laughs> um, what else? Any questions? Kind of throwing a bunch out there. Anybody have any anything that I'm missing? Those of you guys that remember? Are you before. leading the fly out? Uh, are you are you leading a fly out this morning? I'm not leading. You know, I'm not leading any fly outs for the liability thing. I'm going to take some friends and we'll go do our flying around. But I I tell people to to get up with somebody that's done flying here before and connect with them. And same people. Somebody said, Hey, can you give me a map of all these places you land? And I used to do that and talk about and rate it. You know, from like on a skier scale, green circle, blue square, black diamond, double black diamond. I I just found myself thinking, man, there's there's liability on all aspects of the planet coming at me with my own life, having a heli ski operation and chasing avalanches to flying airplanes and teaching people. And now this big shindig, I'm, oh my goodness, liability's creeping all over. So long story short, I don't want to lead any flyouts, and I don't even want to tell you where I land. But if, <laughs> if you're capable, you know you are, you've got the skills to do such, everything out here is landable. And, and go by the book and make sure you can do it properly. Um, People have asked about racing. The stoll drags are taken off like nobody's business. Um, to allow a lot of people to come in on Friday, because there's going to be, we're going to start doing our time trials at 1 o'clock, and that gives us all afternoon to do time trials. Um, that gives you an opportunity to go to Bodad for breakfast. It allows all that morning traffic to get in here, and then midday it kind of slows down until the evening again when people start coming back. And uh, we're going to start racing at about 1 o'clock. How do I sign up? Well. If you want to race on Saturday, you got to qualify on Friday, and we take the top 16 on Saturday to race. This 3,500 foot track brings a carbon cub and a beaver head to head, believe it or not. It brings the 185 against the 182. I mean, it's they're within seconds of each other. But really, you got to get the top fastest 16 times will qualify for Saturday, and then Saturday's the big shindig, and hoorah for uh, what we call our world championship stole drag races, but it's taken off. Um, it's going to Reno. It's going to be in the Reno Air Races this next year. And so we have this opportunity to really make something of it and do something cool. But they've given us the keys to fill in a lot of blanks for their, what we call the stole show. And we're going to do slowest lap at Reno around the biplane track. We're going to do stole drag racing. We're going to do traditional stole. And, and all that stuff. Of course, when you guys see Draco here show up this afternoon, it's gonna—it's a showstopper. Um, but at any rate, so this whole program that we're doing with our races is gonna go to Reno. And so when you guys are watching it, if you got any feedback or thoughts or wonderments, it's important because we don't want to go to Reno and be this one-hit wonder. People think, "Oh, that was cool." And <laughs> move it on. I want, 
want to make an imprint so that we can all of a sudden go, man, that was really, really cool. People want to see it. Maybe something comes of it. But we've got guys building airplanes to win this stole drag. And uh, it's, it's taken off. It's Mike Patey is a classic example. He got smoked in the little red Wilgo that could. And then he went home and spent a million dollars and built like this monstrosity. He's like, I'm coming to win that thing. Well, he's got to take on Steve Henry with his new, you know, nitrous endorsed. Highlander with the Yamaha engine. He's got to take on Toby and Kevin Eldridge and Breeden and Sneed. I mean, we got some heavy, heavy hitters, and the racing action is going to be awesome. And then some of you that have never done it, you might find yourself a contender because, man, oh man, it's a lot to it. But we'll talk about stole drag and all that. You can always go out and practice if you want. It's down, it's back. Um, if you don't know the rules, you can ask somebody about it. But it's all about, you know, it comes down to pilot. When do you slip? Full throttle, when do you slip? You gotta land on or after that line because if you land before the line on both ends, there's time penalties. If you don't land on heading down on that end, come to a complete stop, you get disqualified. So you can ask people about it. But that's kind of all I got really. I'll uh, let you guys do your thing. It's gonna be a busy day. Um, as people are coming in, people are looking to camp. You know, from the ground here, it looks pretty busy, but Corey and I just went flying and from the air, we're like, man, where, there's not very many people down there. And so let people snuggle in next to you. You know, I know we like our elbow room, but it's kind of nice to meet somebody and, and do that thing. Uh, somebody asked me, I'm just kind of hitting things as they hit in my head. Um, if you're camped next to somebody with a generator or whatnot, maybe you can be respectful for one another, but I think this is all kind of generator city. And so if you don't like generators, maybe think about that. And, you know, maybe tell somebody when they're showing up, hey, I got a generator, you might want to might want to park here. So just give them a heads up, you know, it is what it is. I got a generator all night and start tonight when my kids show up. Well, my wife shows up, that generator's on all the time. Um, not really. Um, aside from that, uh, that's kind of the day. We'll have the, the tent set up with all the gear and goods. We're gonna have a dry erase board in there where if you have, looking for somebody or questions, you can put it up there, and, you know, you can go by and check in there. We'll have hats, t-shirts, all that stuff. Um, we talked about wristbands. We got some incredible raffle prizes. I mean, I think we're up to about a $15,000, $20,000 raffle. And so we'll have raffle tickets for sale and all that kind of stuff if you so desire. But um, we've got some incredible stuff, be it uh, the TAC Aero Experience, which is incredible in itself. The Airframes Alaska, your choice of bush wheels. Uh, we've got a, a Truckee Tahoe, my buddy Kevin Sloan's offering a seaplane rating. Um, overnighting at a lot. There's just, there's so much I got to read all of it because I don't want to forget anybody, but there's a lot there. So anyway, everybody's wanting to go do their thing. Have a good day. Have a good breakfast. Watch what's going on. If Where's my buddy that was on the radio yesterday? Is Ryan here? He might be flying right now. If you want to do radio, you're more than welcome. I carry radio around all day, but it's critical that we have somebody on the radio all the time. And so just check in with me. If you want to be a radio guy for an hour or two, that's great. And it's just real simple. It's a welcome. You send them where they might want to go for questions if you have parking. But my biggest factor is deciding where downwind base and vinyl traffic is and make sure we don't have anybody stepped on each other. So we all, again, hear about those things that happen at clients that cannot happen here. It just cannot happen. And so if you're doing radio, I'd love for you to be able to help. And uh, it's just simple advisories. So somebody had a question? Yeah, you said there's been a bunch of people coming in today. Practicing back and forth? 100%. Okay, so yeah. is there a procedure left side? Yeah, right so side? usually when we're training, we're training on the outside, which we haven't even made that outside lane yet, but those okay. that are training have raced before so they know it. Okay. And, and oftentimes we'll give you an, hey, we're doing a training lap, can you hold? <laughs> and so just make a big right traffic, clockwise pattern, and hold, and then we'll get you in right away. That happens a lot. Especially once we really get racing during races, people are coming in and we'll tell them just to hold. But if anybody wants to do radio, that's just something that I think is critical. We always have somebody on the radio, eyes on the ground. And don't be bashful. If you got a radio in your pocket and you see a couple guys here lining up and it doesn't look right, get on the radio and talk to somebody, you know, and that's where we all got to please one another. Um, last but not least, just seeing cans in the fire. Um, we're trying really hard not to throw any pallets in the fire this year. Uh, for the nail reason, we picked up more nails than I can exaggerate about. Please don't throw cans and bottles in the fire. Uh, cans burn up and they're kind of okay, but it's amazing how much glass, trash, and 
crap. We all packed it in, pack it out. You know, it's really simple. And people say, God, you ought to have some trash cans out here. I'm like, well, I don't really want to put trash cans out here because that means I'm packing it out rather than you. And so what you pack in, pack it out. You know, last night I came to the fire with three beers in my pocket. You know, one in the front, two in the back, and one in hand. And so as I clean them up, they get crushed and they fill those pockets up and they end up in the trash can at the camp. So just don't put it in the fire because it's so hard to clean up afterwards. And then uh, the other thing too is, I understand the whole private fire factor. It's it's really, as you can see, the scar on the desert. It leaves a big scar. So we try to encourage people to have the common fire where you can come, meet, hang out, mingle. If you've got your campfire off the ground, you're not leaving a scar, that's fine. And, I'm not that guy that's gonna tell everybody to put your personal fire out, because I get it, but the idea is that the scar it leaves out here, I mean, can you imagine six, 800 fires out here? It just, it's an eyesore. And so we wanna be able to keep coming back here and make it the way it is. This place is beautiful. And uh, pack out what you pack in. Uh, just, I brought a little Honda 1000. I know there's a lot of generators with that and the battery cables, and I, it'll be right next to my tent. Um, next to my plane, Station Air has big Sky Chick Adventures on the tail. If somebody needs it, if the battery's dead or something, feel free to take it and I'll make sure the battery cables are with it. If, just what Ramona's saying, if you don't know Ramon, Ramona, um, Sky Chick on the internet, she's a famous female pilot for all of her awesome travels. Um, but Ramona's got charging capabilities and whatnot down at her 206 and it says Sky Chick on the side. She's awesome. She'll help you any way you can if you need charging or batteries or stuff. Thanks for that. Yeah. Anything else from anybody? Uh, fireworks. Any kind of things we should know about? You want to blow them up? Blow them up or not? <laughs> Do you have them? I have some. Yeah, just go out here and blow them up. <laughs> Throw them in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have, we have, so people have asked about that. We have a shooting range. The shooting range is down at Toby's camp at the end. See Toby? If you don't know who Toby is, Toby's in the white pacer and the 172 with flames. We try to shoot down there. The reason being is that, again, we're gonna have a lot of kids. You don't realize how many kids are out here running around in this desert until you get out about 100 yards and there's a little hill and you see them all out here. Don't shoot trap and don't shoot down here. Walk down to the end and we got a little run rifle range and shooting area set up down there for just that. Again, it's the people thing. There's just lots and lots of people and we can't afford to have the situation. There's the shooting range down on that end. What else? Fireworks, we got big fireworks show Saturday night. But uh, that's kind of that. Wait till you see it. How about these nice tracks that are running around the fire? Here? These nice tracks. Yeah, the four-wheeler <laughs> side to side. Oh yeah, the four-wheelers. And so that's a good one for late night revelry. Um, if, if we're one of these guys running around in trucks late night, Ty Perkin, and we're running around in <laughs> four-wheelers late night, Scott Palmer, and so, that kind of stuff, make sure no, they weren't. We, we were all together last night. Um, that's a big deal. There's a lot of people that aren't affiliated with airplanes that come in that bring their motos and think, wow, this is awesome. Well, there's also a point where people are sleeping and trying to enjoy their their time here too. And so we always kind of throw out that, you know, midnight it's getting pretty late. You're here at the fire, it is what it is, but we don't need to get on our four wheelers and go racing through camp and doing donuts. And Good targets. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bad deal. And so enough said on that. For a 70 year old, 10 o'clock is plenty late. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. But I, midnight, midnight is what it is, and there's always these guys. My buddy Rob, who's in his 185, I, it's no matter how hard you try, you can't get up earlier than he, and he's the guy that's going to come buzz the backside of camp every morning. But <laughs> no, you want the quiet and solitude. Idaho's that way just a little bit. <laughs> so I see her flying, man. 185, loud. That's music to my ears at 6 a.m. I love that. Stuff. So if you're one that doesn't like airplane noise, you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> Um, it's going to rattle your tent. No, and I get it. I got one more thing. I made about four years ago. It's the ultimate air camping checklist, and it's time to redo it. Awesome. So what you guys, what I'm looking for is to find new cool gear that you use, you trust, you love it, especially little stuff, because you guys in the whole thing bring little stuff. And so if you have something, please find me and tell me about it, because I'll grab it, I'll buy it, I'll review it, and, and then I can add it for Oshkosh and Sun and Fun. Awesome. 
Anybody else have any questions, curiosities? Well, welcome. That's the day. We'll see you back here. We'll have another meeting like this tomorrow morning. We try to do them every morning. Encourage people that have never been to come. I give them the same thing. And so, if you you know if you don't want to come to tomorrow's meeting, that's fine. It's just an opportunity that everybody gets to hear what the plan of the day is and what's happening. And we'll do it again nine o'clock tomorrow morning. So, cheers. Safe flying, everybody, and be safe today.